Hey guys, Mr. B here, bringing you another lovely math video. Uh, this one on the integral zero theorem. And uh, the integral zero theorem is closely related to a couple of videos that we've already done. Uh, synthetic division and factor theorem and remainder theorem. So if you haven't watched those videos, you might want to because I'm going to use those kind of in this video. Uh, and basically all the uh, integral zero theorem is used for is to, uh, you know, solve cubics and quartics and so on. It's really um, it's really some, somewhat of a cumbersome way of doing it, but you know it works pretty much every time. Um, but what I would say to you guys if you're out there and you're trying to solve a cubic and you're looking for a way to do that, what I always do is, is check to see if grouping will work first. Um, and if grouping doesn't work, then maybe you have to go with the integral zero theorem. So let's do an example and see if we can't get the hang of how we do this. So the first step with the integral zero theorem <clears throat> is to look at our last term. And our, or sorry, our constant, or last term is the constant. And what we want to do is list out the possible factors of this, of this cubic. So the possible factors. come from that number. So the possible factors are the factors of 3. So plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 3. So what we need to do is now evaluate this cubic with those possible factors. So we need to find um, what P of 1 is, P of negative 1, P of 3, and p of negative 3. So you can see how this could easily get cumbersome. If you have a number out here that's, you know, we have negative 3 or 3, if you had something like 24, you would have a lot of possible factors. But remember, all we need to do is find 1. So once we get, a po once we get 1, we are set. So I'm going to cheat a little bit, and I... Th and what I say to my students, if, if you have some intuition into what you think this um, the factor is use that because remember we only need one that's all we need so I know that um, P of 3 equals 0 so I can just check and show you how I, got, how I could do that so P of 3 so I go 3 cubed plus 3 squared minus 11 times 3 minus 3 so this ends up being um, 27 plus 9 minus 33 minus 3 so that ends up being 0 so that tells me that x minus 3 is a factor of p of x because this is basically the factor theorem which I talked about in another video and all the factor theorem says that if I substitute a number into uh, a polynomial, if I get 0, then um, x minus that number is a factor of that polynomial. So we can use this now to be able to solve this cubic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a synthetic division to divide this polynomial by this factor. So let's just do that. So my polynomial is x cubed, so I'll put 1 plus x squared minus 11x minus 3. So I have to make sure I go in synthetic divide, successive factors. So if I look at that, I'm going to divide by whatever number I sub into um, my cubic. So 3, or the opposite of this guy, I guess you could say subtract 3, so plus 3. Um, so 3, take down my 1, times by 3, add 4, so that becomes 12, that becomes negative 1, or sorry, positive 1, 3, so indeed, I have a remainder of 0. So, if you get something different here, you either did your synthetic division wrong, or you made a mistake in choosing the factor. So that tells me that I have, um, basically I'm left with this. So that polynomial can be written like this x minus 3, x squared plus 4x 
plus 1. So in order to, to find the other possible um, factors or solutions of this guy, I need to, I need to be able to find this because I already know that one solution is x is equal to 3. So that's one root or solution to this guy. If I want to find the other ones, I need to solve this so I can use quadratic formula for that. If it doesn't factor, what adds you give me 4, multiplies me 1, nothing does that. So I'll have to use quadratic formula. So let me do that. So x squared plus 4x plus 1. So x is equal to, I'm not, well, I'll write it over here. x is equal to negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So you should probably have seen that many, many times before. Uh, negative 4 plus or minus the square root 4 squared minus 4ac. Uh, so I end up with divided by 2a. So I get negative 4 plus or minus 16 squared minus 4. So that's going to be 10, or sorry, 12, all over 2. Or negative 2 plus or minus, negative 4 plus or minus. Uh, this guy breaks up into 4 times 3, so 2 root 3, all over 2. So my final answer here for this guy is 2 plus or minus root 3. So that gives me my other two solutions. So remember that a cubic, you know, usually has uh, three solutions, sometimes one and double root. Um, or it could have just one and two imaginaries as well. Uh, so yeah, so those are my three solutions. So this, so I have, let me write it my final answer. So my solutions are x equals negative 3, negative 2 plus root 3, negative 2 minus root 3. So yeah, so hopefully that answers our question. Our question was, of course, what's to find the roots? So if you want to, you need to find the factors. Then once you have one factor, you have to use synthetic division. Once you use synthetic division, you have the maker quadratic. Or if it's a quartic, it'll be a cubic. And then once you find that quadratic, you need to find the solutions to that quadratic. And then you have to put all your solutions together into your three, um, your three roots, your three solutions. I hope this helped, guys. It's, I'll probably make another video with another example because this is kind of long to make uh, two examples in one video. So I hope this helps. Remember, in order to get this stuff, you got to do lots of questions because there's many different possib possibilities. All right. Best of luck. I'll see you guys in class.